Both these stands close down to roughly the same length. They also seem to extend to the same height of about seven feet. So what makes this one 80 bucks and this one 40 bucks? Stick around, let's talk about what I look for in travel stands. What's going on everyone, Seth Miranda here, coming from my studio right here in Manhattan. If you don't know who I am, I'm a pro photographer right here in New York, and I do a bunch of videos on photo-related stuff. And a while ago, I did a live stream on how to set up a C-stand out of pure boredom, I did that one. But it's still today one of my best performing videos. I get comments on all the time, and apparently there aren't a lot of grip videos out there, so I keep getting asked to do more. Well, one of the things I'm like obsessed over is always finding the best travel stand. I'm always on the road, I need to keep my kits small, and there's a lot of things I look for in a travel stand because you're hanging a lot of yourself off that stand, whether it's an expensive light or something else. If it hits the ground, could hurt someone. It has to be small, light, nimble, yet still strong and worthwhile in your kit. So let's talk about a few things I look for. This is gonna sound like crazy obsessive, but I hope it gives you guys some insight into some things to look for when you are out there purchasing some uh, smaller lightweight stands that you might throw in your bag when you're around your own neighborhood to shoot, or you're traveling internationally like I have to for work sometimes, or wherever you're going, if you need to bring a stand with you and make it worthwhile. Let's talk about what I look for. So the first thing I look at is what the length of the stand is when it's closed, because I can only have a max length of 20 inches, and here's why. So when I'm traveling, I use this. The Think Tank Security V3. This is my carry-on case. It houses a bunch of speed lights, a ton of grip, and the internal dimension maximum is 21 inches, which means a 21 inch stand is probably the best you're gonna get in there, cause you know, it's not gonna be straight and all different other things. So if I take the stand I always use, it definitely fits in there. And I carry a minimum of two of these at all times inside this case, which is great. So it has to be a maximum of 20 inches closed. Now that's not a big thing, right? There's plenty of stands that do that, but, what happens to that stand when it's open? What are the other features of it? And what can I use it for and get the most out of it? And how durable is it? Blah, 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 right? Well, let's take a look at this. So after you have the length, you worry about the diameter of it closed because every inch in your case means something. And when you start saving an inch on everything, you start having to a lot of space to add more things and be able to do a lot more on set because you just have so much more versatility and more tools to work with, right? I'm a little crazy, maybe you're not, but this is the Matthews Mini Reverse Stand. This is the stand that I put in that case, and I'm always looking for like the best travel stand. I always wonder if there's something that will dethrone this for me, and this has been in that case alone for at least five years, maybe more, and it's yet to fail on me. It's yet to just make me wanna throw it out of my case, or I have yet to find something that I think is better than it, and here's why. First of all, the closed diameter of it is tight, 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 tight. In case you want to compare it, here is another stand. And I don't know if you guys can really tell, but it is considerably bigger all the way around. In fact, it doesn't even close that clean. Now, when this stand closes, it's nice and clean. This stand, it's actually can't even close down all the way. It's got, it goes right into a bunch of threads, which I think a lot of us have seen stands that do that. It's like, it's, it's like a garage sale stand, I consider it. Now I'm not gonna go into which brand I'm gonna compare this Matthews to. I'm only gonna keep referring to this by brand because it's what I actually use, I trust, and I believe in it. I'm not sponsored by Matthews. This video isn't sponsored by Matthews. It's just a solid legacy brand, and I really love this stand. These stands, I'm gonna gaff tape out the name, but I'll say it's a brand that a lot of you people seem to love a lot out there, and it's very budget friendly all across the board around what they make but there are caveats to things. The first thing I'm gonna say is, this has a load capacity of nine pounds. This load capacity of 4.4 pounds. So they both close the same length, they both extend the same height, but right away this closes down tighter, gives you more space in the bag. This also can take more than double or basically double the weight capacity on it right there, awesome. Now the other thing I look for is how it's built what is it made out of? So, you know, you, there are a lot of plastic parts that sneak their way onto lower cost stands. And in the end, it costs you more money because you're either gonna buy that stand more than once or something's gonna fall off that stand and you're gonna have to buy that again. 
Now, I'm not here to tell you what to buy and not to buy. There's definitely cases where I bought budget stands and I will go over that later on in this video. But for the most part, I look at grip as the most sound investment in your kit. You, no matter what camera you switch to, lenses you're using, lights you're on, it doesn't matter. It's, the grip stays with you for like almost your whole career as long as it holds up. And believe me, I have grip that has been with me since day one because I bought it once. And the other argument I'll say is a lot of people say, well, if it's cheap enough, I can buy it twice. Okay, well, I would rather not have it fail at all. So when I'm out there in the field, it's not that, oh, it broke, not a big deal. It only cost me this much. It's more like, well, now I can't do what I'm trying to do. And now I gotta come with a plan B, C, or D. And that's where I don't play games. And not to mention, who knows what could fail on this and potentially hurt someone or damage other gear. So that's the whole thing to itself. I'm on a tangent. Let's get back to what I look for. Okay, so why don't we start with the bottom to the top, right? So right away on the Matthews stand, what you're looking at are these really nice bolts that you can tighten. So it's not rivets. This, all I need to do is carry around, which is really easy to do in my case, is a box wrench, maybe even an adjustable wrench, and an Allen key that fits, and it's like having a new stand again. There is no, there's no play, because I'm constantly putting this back to zero. With other stands like this one, it's rivets. And they're always kind of shaky, right? There's always some give to them. There's always a little bit of play to it. Now imagine while it's in your case and it's getting crammed into an overhead or smashed against some stuff or thrown in a trunk or gears getting piled on top of it, your legs get bent one way or another and keep flexing and stretching out those rivets and you start getting more and more play. After a while, your stand has a hard time staying stable or staying just straight because there's gives somewhere in it. That's what you don't really want in the stand. You want it to be as stable as possible. That's the point of the stand is to grip and be stable and be a support. Whoa, I know. So is that a deal breaker? Maybe it isn't for you. Maybe you just need a small light stand to throw into a backpack and just get down to the park to shoot some shots totally fine. But if you're like me and you're traveling and there's a lot of people resting on your shoulders to get the job done that day, the last thing we do is, yeah, I know that stand broke and I I'm down a light, but hey guys, I saved a bit of money on that stand. You never want to say that. So what else do I look for? Well, after we get past the base, let's talk about the knobs. So on the budget brands, you tend to have these knobs that are, well, basically a bolt and a clamping system. And what happens is you can easily get to a point where you go past a tension and you just have a bolt that spins forever and you could actually have a failed clamp and the whole stand is kind of garbage. Or what actually happens is you keep on going a little bit more and a little bit more each time because you end up wearing down or breaking in these clamps to a point where they just don't want to tighten that much more and you keep going and going and that's when you have the bolt spin forever. Or the other side where it's a hex like stuck inside there, what happens there is sometimes that rounds out or over time if you didn't keep up on maintenance of it, it could keep on shifting towards the edge and then it becomes a point where it doesn't have a uh, bite on it. You didn't think about it, you didn't look at it, you went to go tighten it, you're talking to somebody, tighten it, and you start rounding out that socket. Things like that happen. When I looked at the Matthews, what was great about this is it's basically what a C-stand does. It's a bolt going into the rod itself. So there's no clamp happening here. It's basically a bolt going in, and which is basically the same system you would have on uh, the socket on a light, right? You put it onto a stand, you tighten it down. This is the same exact idea as that. So right away, you already know that you have more longevity on a stand like this, or even uh, the ability to put more tension on it because it's going into and against the post rather than trying to use a clamp system where it's bending and bending and always bending. And at some point, the weakest point of that will give way a spinning knob. And I'm sure a few of you that are watching this can tell me down in the comments how many of the stands you have out there where the knob just keeps on spinning forever. I feel you, I'm with you, I heard you. Believe me, I hear you. We got the close down length, we have the close down diameter, we have the base and what it's uh, adhered by or basically built with, and then we have the knobs, right? But what about the actual tubes themselves? Well, this is a thicker tube. This means that the tubes are less susceptible to swaying or bending because they have more stability to them. Now, this does make this stand a little heavier than, you know, this guy right here. 
Absolutely, but it also lets this stand be rated for nine pound capacity instead of 4.4, and that's a big deal. Now, one thing that I'll say about uh, a lot of budget stands is they try to throw in these like weird little extras that seem they're like they're very convenient. So at the top of stands like this, you have a quarter 20 that could also be a 3 8. What do I mean? Well, I'm saying there's threads there. And that's cool, right? You think to yourself, oh man, if I just wanna put a speed light there with a foot or you know, some sort of small camera or a microphone even if I wanted to, you have it right there. The problem is no matter what you do, no matter what you say to yourself, you are going to bang these threads and you're gonna smash them. And then what's gonna happen is they're gonna be unusable really quickly. And if you don't recognize that they're unusable and you try to thread something on there, you could damage the equipment you try to thread onto this. And you cannot replace this because it's pinned into place. It's not something that like you can unscrew something and just change that, uh, that post. It's in there. And then that becomes useless and it's like, who cares anymore? That's why I'm more into having just a straight up hardcore, you can beat the hell out of it, 5 8 post right there. If I need something with threads, I'll carry something that is an adapter or a umbrella adapter or something that will put threads on top of this, which isn't hard to do. You guys have seen me do a lot with stands, especially from a travel kit, including articulating arms, which is something I'm gonna get to in a few minutes. Now let's talk about this thing opened up and actually full function, right? So let's, open this to this full seven feet that it's telling me it can go, right? And they both will go to the same height, but then there's the stability factor, right? There's this on the budget brand, which is, it is what it is, right? And then there's my tried and true guy over here, which already feels super tight and nice and safe and sound. And when I open it up, you can, you, as soon as it hits the ground, you don't hear any of this like rattling or whatever, but you see how quickly it goes back to place? See how like crazy flimsy that is? This goes right to true pretty easily. And that's how you can tell how much stability you have on it. Now here's where one of you in the comments is gonna go, well, all that rattling and shaking and all that loose stuff doesn't mean anything once there's weight on it. It's a travel stand, you're not putting a lot of weight on it. And on top of that, this can't take as much weight as this. So right there, when you're talking about $80 versus $40, this might be $80 and you, I've had it for five years, but this could be $40 and then next year another $40 and six months after that another $40 and you're 120 bucks deep and you're wondering why you keep buying this stand. This is what I'm talking about when it comes to making smart decisions with your uh, grip, you know, and especially if you want to do more with it. You don't know where you're going to be in a few years as a photographer or whatever you're doing out there that requires stands. You don't know what you are going to get yourself into, what gear you're going to buy, what's going to come out, how your style shifts, what gear you'll carry with you to supplement that style. I love a lot of lights. I, I, there's no, no denying that. And if I want to, I can take this stand like I do all the time in the middle of the streets. You guys have seen this in videos all over Adorama TV where I'll take something like an articulating arm and I'll just mount it, boom, right to this. Make sure things are tight. And I'm pretty good to go. There's gonna be some sway to it, especially when you put it all the way up to the top, right? There's definitely gonna be some sway to it. And there's definitely gonna be a little bit of flex to it. And what I could do also is just drop these legs all the way flat to the ground to give it as much as I can. And then if I wanted to, I could even use this articulating arm to go higher with the light if I really wanted to. Of course, remember when you're hanging something off a light, you go right over a leg. That's the most stable point. You don't wanna go in between legs, it'll fall right over. But it's pretty stable and I feel all right with it. I mean, yeah, you know? I can't really say that for some other stands, especially ones with thinner tubing or different uh, you know, clamp and knob systems going on out there. But that's a big deal. And you know, I use Profoto speed lights. They're about a grand each and hanging something off of a stand that's a grand, it'll get your heart pumping a little bit. But I don't feel that nervous with this stand. I can't say that about other ones. And uh, as far as the articulating arms go, if you're curious about that, I'll put a link down below for my video on articulating arms. Go check that out. I get a lot of questions about them and there's a whole world to those as well. But just keep in mind, as far as travel stands go, they're not gonna be the most stable thing on earth. You can only get to stable enough. 
Keep in mind, this is a five-year-old stand, right? I've beaten the hell out of it. You guys have seen it in videos all over the place on Adorama TV and other things. This is fresh out of the box and this is as good as it gets and it will only get more and more flexible and loose over time. And after a while, you're just asking for some sort of issue to happen there. Why would you go for a low cost brand over the more expensive? And why would I, did I say earlier that I have easily taken uh, low cost brands over the expensive brand? Well, sometimes I'm doing a job and I just need it for that day or uh, I've, and this sounds absolutely terrible and I'm well aware of this, you do a job and sometimes it costs less to leave it there than to fly back with it, believe it or not. And I'll end up giving these away to assistants or someone there, or there was actually a job that was at a convention center that I would leave them there and then I'd have to come back for the convention the next year and they'd, they'd be there in a closet somewhere. You gotta get in with the janitors and the maintenance guys, they'll, they'll hook it up. Also, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you have to judge for yourself how serious you are. Right? I mean, are you just checking this out? Is it something that's not gonna travel? You just needed a small stand that's gonna stay in one place? Maybe that's fine, maybe it works for you. Why go crazy if you're not gonna go crazy, right? Uh, there's plenty of reasons to save that extra dollar, but in, for me, when I'm working, again, it's a real tough sell for, to myself to go, hey, I will put this $1,000 speed light on something that's a little shaky that's 40 bucks less. You know, and this is me talking as a pro that my gear is how I, I make my living, how I pay my rent, how I eat. And if you're not in that situation, maybe it's not that crazy for you. But for me, I don't think spending an extra 40 bucks is a question. You know, especially if you're someone that looks to resell your gear, keep that in mind. I could sell this stand again, probably no, no problem, sell a whole kit and then move on and upgrade or maybe I'll just retire, I don't know. but. It's, there's a lot to be said for buying quality stuff that's meant to be a support for the rest of your system. And there's also the peace of mind. I don't know how many of you get stressed out when you're going on a job or going somewhere, but you know, just, oh, I'm missing that one piece or, oh my gosh, that thing broke. Or how many of you guys use systems that require 20 different adapters for things and once that piece of plastic breaks, you're not using that soft box with that light that day, it all happens to us. Everything rests on like a freaking needle on everything that we do. If you don't have that adapter, that cable, this thing, that charger, why give yourself another thing to stress about? So that's my little spiel on travel stands. Again, these aren't like the end all. They aren't meant to be carrying a lot of weight. You probably saw some flex happening there with the articulating arm, but these stands aren't meant to be your end all. They're not a C stand. And if they made a C-stand that somehow miraculously would collapse down and go into a traveling case or a carry-on case or whatever, it would be amazing. But it doesn't exist, guys. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but there are better choices and there's definitely a better way to go about things. And peace of mind goes a long way. You, as a creative, don't you kind of want to just get your head free and get all the variables you can off your back so you can stay consistent on the course you're trying to get to, which is your final product? I don't like my lights changing calls, exposures, all sorts of things. I don't like my grip falling apart. I don't like my bag having zippers that break. I don't like having gear that I feel will at some point fail on me and then I fail what I'm trying to do or have to make compromises to just get out of the job alive or the shoot alive. And even if you're a hobbyist, maybe it's not about a paycheck, but it's about your time and energy and ambition. It's hard to stay inspired and ambitious about what we're trying to do. And once, I know, I know everyone's been in this situation where you go to go shoot something, it didn't work out, and then you say, oh, I figured it out. And you never really go back to shoot it again because it's a lot to, to take in. It's a big hill to climb to, get that ambition and go do it again. So do yourself a favor and make wise decisions for your gear. Think about what your needs are. Think about what you're trying to do. But for me, this Matthews mini reverse stand has still held up as my favorite travel stand. Um, I'm putting links down to it, uh, to it down below. All right, that's gonna do it for me, guys. I hope this was helpful at all. There's a lot of things to consider when looking at grip, and I know people look at stands and tripods and go, ah, it's just a bunch of legs. It's all the same. It kind of isn't. So uh, if you want to know anything or have any questions, hit me with a comment down below. Don't forget to like, share this video around, it really helps out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified more videos like this come out on my channel. Thank you guys so much for spending your time with me and uh, I'll see you next time, later.